today in Nigerian Youth SDGs, in collaboration with the British High Commission, we had an event that we talked about creative job and decent employment for young Nigerians, and we looked at the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan. It is expected that discussions here today, which will focus on the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan, will not only sensitize partners and stakeholders on the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan, but that through this advocacy effort of the British High Commission and the Nigerian Youth SDGs Network, stakeholders will work with the ministry to develop a robust partnership that will ensure wider reach of youth employment programs across the country. Donor and development partners are also being engaged by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports in collaboration with the ILO to ensure a coordinated approach in the design, implementation and funding of development cooperation projects that focus on youth employment. To strengthen inclusion, the youth were actively involved in the development of the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan. And the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports continually encourages youth to imbibe the culture of engaging policy makers with ideas and innovative solutions to, to challenges confronting youth. This event today focuses a lot on green jobs and digital skills, which are part of uh, the key areas that underpins strategic lines of action for Nigerian youth. This is the program that uh, the ILO country director mentioned uh, that was funded by the organization and was implemented by Nigerian Youth SDGs Network in Nigeria uh, in last year. Uh, like It's called the Skills for Employment Program and it focuses on young people across Nigeria, particularly in three states. Uh, and the organization partnered with technology hubs in Adamawa, Benue, and Nasarawa states. Uh, if you look at the number of people that applied for this, uh, Joshua told me that it was open for a very short time. Quite a lot of young Nigerians applied, telling you that the youth unemployment rate in Nigeria is really high and people are looking for opportunities to get into spaces uh, like this. And this program went on with a focus on training uh, for young people on graphic design, web development and training, uh, and um, focusing a lot on employability skills, how young people themselves can get employed and remain uh, in those employment. And it was pretty much a lot of training that ran for a period of seven weeks uh, with the support uh, gotten from uh, the ILO in Nigeria. Nigeria is a real conundrum and I've I just still find I can't understand Nigeria. So on the, at the very macro level, you've got three ingredients of growth. You've got a very large economy, size actually matters, size of your market is huge. You've got a lot of natural resources, most completely underdeveloped minerals. You've got minerals everywhere. Um, you've got very fertile land, uh, you've got oil and gas, and you've got unbelievably talented people. Policy does matter, frankly, the, but the macro policy, you've got some real fundamentals which just don't work. You know, foreign exchange, you mentioned the subsidies. You've got to get the basics right, guys, before you even get to the level of policies around employment and labour mobility and all of that. None of that's going to work if the macro doesn't work. I think the youth need to get engaged on the economy, the policy around the economy. You've got to have really clear ask. You get my vote if you sort out fuel subsidies, macro and so on. They need to have some really clear demands from you, not just about youth issues, but about the fundamentals of the economy, I would say. Um, secondly, productivity. It's unbelievably low here. You know, you've got this amazing agricultural potential, but why is it such low value added? Technology is clearly one of the answers to that. And actually encouraging you to think about agriculture, but more interesting agriculture, the tech side and so on. And then I think somebody mentioned here soft skills. I think it's, it's really crucial. All the evidence suggests, and this is, I think, is a weakness actually in the Nigerian approach curriculum. Doesn't, you know, naturally your, you know, your people are very articulate and present very well, but I do think the curriculum really needs to address the importance of communication skills and you know, how you, the impact you have. Um, and then finally, on the demographic dividend, the problem is it's not going to be a demographic dividend because of demography. You've got 75.5% demographic growth rate. It's too high. People have to have less children. So, <laughs> frankly, Bangladesh did it. They had a massive campaign, two children is enough. It has turned around Bangladesh, which is now a phenomenal success story. The only way you're going to get the demographic dividend is by, I'm afraid, tackling that tricky issue of demography. There's something called the Digital Economy uh, Initiative for Africa. And there are five components of that, but I'll focus on three that I think in Nigeria should be well invested in. The first thing is digital awareness. The second thing is digital skills and capabilities. And the last one is infrastructure. Now, how can 
we galvanize support. There are five things for us to galvanize support in investing on those three things. The first one is public-private partnerships. I mean, that's the conventional thing that anybody will say, but uh, there is nothing new around working on digital skills in Nigeria. Either public institutions or private agencies are working on that. You know, Google, Facebook have dedicated skills development programs that they are running. But how well do these institutions partner with government agencies, right? Uh, right now, I know that an organization like tech for dev led by a young person called Joel Obusola, is upskilling one million people across uh, Africa in partnership even with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport. We need more of such partnerships to ensure that institutions within government as well as private agencies can work together to ensure that we can not only support people or young people to develop the skills, but also provide infrastructure for them to cultivate their skills digitally. The second thing will be digital connectivity. And we cannot underemphasize the relevance of this. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw how the prevalence of digital non-connectivity affects not only education, but other indexes or pointers of employability. Uh, the government rolled out TV programs, interactive video instructions, but how many individuals? Let's even talk about broadband connection in Nigeria. I mean, NITDA as well as other digital orientation institutions are trying, but I think the government also needs to work more in ensuring that more areas in Nigeria can be connected because when that happens, young people in rural communities who have access to improved connectivity can actually develop the skills needed for them to harness the gig economy. And that also connects back to, you know, pri uh, public-private partnership. So our organization area high that I lead partnered last year with, interestingly, a UK uh, program called the Digital Access Program. And we were to conduct something called a digital access and gap assessment across Nigeria. And we found out that during, and the objective is to establish that how did young people learn online during COVID? So we went across, you know, up to 10,000 beneficiaries or respondents across Nigeria. And many of them did express that they only worked on basic feature phones that doesn't require the internet to connect to. We need innovation such as, you know, those that can work on phones like that. The third thing would be to review educational curricula to align with the increasing need for a digital society. I won't build up on that. It is a recurring statement in Nigeria that the Nigerian educational curricula is outdated. I don't want to waste time on that. So I'll just keep, we know that already. The fourth thing, which is second to the last, sorry, is digital competencies for teachers. There is nothing, and I warned you earlier, education perspective. We cannot do anything developmental oriented, even in education, without emphasizing the need to first upskill teachers across all the educational levels, from primary to secondary to tertiary. If they are not, if they don't have digital competencies, they can't teach digital skills. For me, as a young person, the fiercest urgency of our time is to ensure that this democratic dividend, so this demographic dividend is being put into sectors that can actually help us leapfrog sustainable development. And as a green economy, we're challenging the old paradigm of doing things, which is, you know, dirty polluting fossil fuel. And you now ask yourself as a Nigerian, why are we still subsidizing things like petrol? when you have a clean economy that you need to actually subsidize and ensure that you're actually scaling up access to clean energy. You know, when we talk about solar energy, people don't really know how, how can I benefit from this? Is there a way if I'm not tech savvy, I can work in this sector? So knowing fully well that it's beyond the sciences of it, you can actually be a distributor, you can actually do something else beyond manufacturing. It's, you know, something that needs to get out there. So when we're getting youth employed we can actually also look at that okay how are these people going to get involved in other sectors beyond agriculture to actually create employment we need to understand the problem 50 percent of people working you know in nigeria today uh, you know they basically work in agriculture contributing just 25 percent of economic output every year that's a problem 50 percent of the people contributing just 25 percent of value and it means that other sectors on the average are three times as, as productive as the agricultural sector and what we need to do is you know to to really unlock uh the opportunity to 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 set things right we need to actually you know raise productivity in the agricultural sector 
And when I talk about race productivity, we see how technology has been used by several, you know, young people coming up. So we need to enable this to, you know, to happen at a scale that helps us to transform and transform very fast. Beside the stereotypes, the first thing that we need to do is to structure, create a, pro a proper structure for learning. I don't want to go into like, you know, educational system where our vocational schools are all dead. The, 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 the equipment that we're using was using equipment from 1950. We're using school drivers. How do you want somewhere to go learn a skill that they can't get a job except they know someone? There's no equal playing field, right? So all of these problems exist. And that's the reason why a lot of young people would just rather go for something that is more sustainable and something that is more guaranteed. Once we're able to create a structure that people can easily go into any school and learn properly, formally, tiling, plumbing, carpentry, and any of these skills, and be able to also create a structure that gives them access to sustainable employment, young people would, would be interested in, in being part of this. It's easy to say, oh, we are training people, but what are we training them to do? How are we engaging the resources that we have invested in training these people and what are the outcomes? I'm very pleased with what I've heard through the evening. Uh, the little I have to just add is that uh, I did hear about, yes, of course, the issues of green jobs, There's that's a great horizon for job opportunities. Uh, I'm very excited to hear the work that the lady on the panel is doing with uh, renewable energy. That's another way to go. And when she was asked what's the way to scale it up, she said money. It's not just about money. It's about innovative and sustainable funding and financing. It's also about making it sustainable in Africa. We are importing almost everything. So making it sustainable, as we had uh, identified in the Gender Action Plan, is to get the women, the young people, the people with disability, towards manufacturing. I don't know how we're going to get around that. Perhaps we're going to have to look at what people are already doing as, uh, as cars and as not refined as it is, but it has to be affordable for the common person. Yeah, uh, renewable energy is the way to go. How affordable, how accessible is it going to be eventually? And if we don't look at the manufacturing end of things, it will still be something for people like you and I that can come and dine with uh, Madam Ambassador. You talked about masons, bricklayers, you call them. Uh, and uh, I sit on the board of recycling firms. We have the babambolas that make our business run. So their roles are very important. We can't take it away. And I appreciate what you do. And I think it's something we all should think about. How can we put corresponding value to what these people do? How are we looking at how to strengthen the resilience of uh, the self-reliance of the people with disabilities? Because we have actually been talking about youth, youth, youth. Are we also putting into consideration most especially this uh, analysis of EDHI in terms of uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Agriculture, we have about 774 local governments in this country. If every local government has a farm that is accessible to every youth, I feel that problem of agriculture can be solved. One of the things I got from this um, training is, from this seminar is, yes, there's a lot going on, but a lot of people are not aware. They're talking about digital skills. How he mentioned some, I'm a teacher, I'm an educationist, and um, the problems we're having today is in teaching. A lot of the teachers in my school, you see teachers who don't know how to use um, digital skills, even their phones. You keep talking, you keep teaching, showing them what to do, and at the end of the day, they don't do, they don't even know what to do. They don't know what to do. So. One is education. We need to start teachers training. It's very important. You're talking about vocational skills. We could bring, in my school, we do entrepreneurship skills for the children. We learn barbing classes. We learn how to make um, um, painting. They pull their shirts. Children of seven, eight, they paint walls. So we need to start those things in local levels. Another thing is awareness. A lot of people don't know. So how, how, do, we, how do we make them aware of these things through media we use the media platform through social media it's about storytelling and its capacity for community de development that is not addressed as much when it comes to how we can solve this problem because 
there are people who have experiences and things that could be used as fuel for all kinds of self-actualization. And I believe that when we start to address that, whether it's through the media, through um, uh, all kinds of initiatives that allow for storytellers and storytelling to be in infused into the actual, you know, um, fabric of what it means to be a career person, to be employed, to be a gainfully, you know, successful young person in our community, then I think we'll start to make different strides. Regarding um, uh, engagement with government, I'll give, I'll give two examples. Right now, every Nigerian is, have you got your PVC? Why? But previously, years back, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in voting. When we are voting, we stay at home. But now you're seeing the need to vote. And nobody tells you to go and get your People are spending hours trying to get their PVC. So that's, a, that's one example. Secondly, the, youth, the Nigerian Youth SDGs, if they didn't engage with government, we won't be here today. So you must engage with government. And uh, the, the process of development is the collaboration, not just government. And that's the essence of the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan. Because the idea is that the government is trying to create a framework where there can be that synergy and we can address fragmentation. So what we are saying is that government is not perfect. Yes, I'm not standing up to say government is perfect, but you must engage to create change. And what the ministry is trying to promote is positive engagement, consistent and positive. For me, I think ultimately we want to see government do better in terms of implementation, in terms of coordination, in terms of you know ensuring that there is consistency. You can't say you want to support youth you know, to thrive in ICT sector and then you are banning it with that. So this is a call to action to advocate for the implementation of the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan through education, employment, entrepreneurship and equal rights. We at this moment call on the government, employers, training providers, civil society organizations, development partners and other key stakeholders to commit to undertaking the following action plans which are urgently needed to advance the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan. One, take action to promote innovation, remove barriers and facilitate open sharing of knowledge. A coercive effort through national advocacy group and policy measures to ensure availability, affordability and assured quality of the concerned products. Ensure open and collaborative approaches among all relevant sectors we cannot overemphasize collaboration this is very very important we take coercive action to scale up successful intervention by youth representatives create entry-level job opportunities implement school to work apprenticeship and on the job training programs and support young entrepreneurship through entrepreneur sorry through mentoring educational institutions should incorporate entrepreneurship into the curriculum and work with employers to ensure that they offer students the appropriate training. School is very, very important. Involve young people as early as possible in the design and implementation of processes of the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan. We don't just want to be beneficiaries, we want to be a part of the work. So get us involved in making this work. Take action to reflect the needs of specific groups alongside effective communication mechanisms to facilitate meaningful dialogue between young people and other relevant stakeholders engaged in the processes. Skills, interventions, and programs must prefer practical solutions. Just like somebody said here, we have heard their policies, but how about practice? These things have to be practical beyond just being us talking about it every day. We must offer skills that are highly demanded and that are required in the labor market. Also, another person talked about soft skills. This is very, very important for us to succeed in the workplace. We should also have internship opportunities. I think that really, really works. Beyond the fact that we want policies, the policies are there, but the implementation, the monitoring, these are the things that are very important to us. World Youth Skills Day, it's a very critical moment to have this kind of conversation and not just limit it here but even beyond yet continue to have this conversation with various stakeholders on the need to actually act now uh, to design, implement and you know build partnerships that would help build the skills of 
young people towards you know digital transformation of Nigeria. One of the key takeaways for me here is um, just addressing the policies, especially that has to do with youth unemployment and youth employment. Um, also addressing the policies that has to do with um, creating opportunities for young people. It's important to align the voices of all the young people across different sectors. What are we trying to do? We're trying to ensure that the young people are included and have access to decent jobs. Predominantly here, what was talked about was the need for the government and young people to collaborate in ensuring that the Nigerian Youth Employment Action Plan actually kicks off and then everything that we have said to do is being done. Uh, a big shout out to the Nigeria Youth SDGs. Um, they're doing an amazing work. I watched the videos um, at doing, during the introduction of the of the project and I'm so impressed by the work that they're doing. I think they should keep it up. We appreciate the good work of uh, the Nigerian Youth SDGs and we also understand um, their, what you call it, their vision. So what we can say to them is that they should keep doing more, they should collaborate more with um, the requisite organizations that are supporting decent jobs and uh, digital skills and let's see how we can push Nigeria further. I want to say kudos to the Nigerian Youth SDG for being able to aggregate this place in the industry. Young people, African entrepreneurs are the ones who will solve Africa's problems and so we want more advocacy but more than this we want more action. We want the government to really take charge of our policies and actually begin to crystallize them. So thank you very much proud of what you do and I look forward to engaging further with you.